Hey, good afternoon, good morning. So today we're answering the most common question that I get with macular degeneration. Do I have wet or do I have dry macular? Hey, I'm Dr. Michael Nelson, your YouTube eye doctor, and today we are talking about the difference between wet and dry macular degeneration. So before we go with that, let's refresh a little bit about what the macula is. So the macula is a very specific part of the retina that deals with your central about 10 degrees of vision, which is about the amount of vision you need to see someone's face. Now there are a few different layers of the retina. One of the most critical areas are the receptor cells, which you will remember they're called the rods and the cones, and there's the highest concentration of the cones in the macula, that's what, which deals with your central vision. Underneath the receptor cells, there's a few different layers of tissues. One's called the RPE, or the retinal pigment epithelium, another one's called the Brooks membrane, and then underneath that is a bed of blood vessels which provides the nutrients which flow to the receptor cells. So first of all, I'm gonna give you my layman's term of how I describe the difference between wet and dry dry macular degeneration, and then we'll do a deep dive into what specifically the difference is and the important things you need to be aware of if you have wet or dry macular degeneration. So the really basic way that I will describe the difference between wet and macular degeneration is basically that both of these conditions are premature aging of the retina. So the cells or the receptor cells on the retina, they dry up or atrophy or die sooner than they need to and that's due to some aging effects. And mostly it's because the blood supply underneath is not getting to those receptor cells. So I'll describe the dry version of macular degeneration as when the blood vessels underneath the retina kind of like dry up and don't provide any more nutrients, and basically then those receptor cells just atrophy away because they, all those blood vessels are dried up. And I describe the wet as if when those blood vessels are drying up, they start to crack and leak, and then they leak fluid underneath the retina, and then you get blood and fluid that builds up un underneath the retina, and then that develops some scarring, which pulls and stretches the tissues, which causes some really devastating loss of vision, and that's what I'll refer to as the wet form of macular degeneration. So generally speaking, about 90% of the people that are diagnosed with macular degeneration have the dry version of macular degeneration, and about 10% have the wet form. Generally speaking, the wet form is a more severe form of the eye disease and causes more severe loss or reduced vision than the dry form. However, there are some forms of the dry macular degeneration, particularly one called geographic atrophy, which is very devastating to the vision, which can be as bad as the vision loss in the wet macular degeneration. Generally speaking as well, people like to hear that they have the dry form of macular degeneration rather than the wet because they know that the likelihood of reduced vision is a little bit less with the dry version. So some of the first signs that someone might be developing macular degeneration actually might relate to your ability to dark adapt or your ability to see in night. And there are some devices that are actually designed to measure your dark adaptation ability and compare those to age match normals to see if that function is reducing and it might be an early sign of dry macular degeneration. Other than that, you may not notice any signs of dry macular degeneration when it's first developing, but your doctor might. And what your doctor is going to see when they're taking pictures inside your eye, they're going to look at the retina and they're going to see changes to that area of the retina. In particular, they're going to see kind of yellow patches or changes to the pigment in that area. So these yellow patches, they're called drusen or druse, and basically they are as accumulations of lipids and inflammation underneath the retina. And they're signs that the nutrients from the that blood supply underneath the retina isn't getting to those receptor cells as well as it could. We also might see changes in the pigmentation in the area of the macula, which also might indicate that there's early dry macular degeneration. And dry macular degeneration will have different forms of it. There's going to be early, moderate, and severe forms of dry macular degeneration, depending on how many of these drusen we see, where they're located, and how it's affecting your vision. Another test that you're going to want to have done is something called an OCT, which stands for Ocular Coherence Tomography. And basically, this is a high-definition ultrasound that uses light waves instead of sound waves, and it gives us a cross-section of the retina so we can actually see what layer these drusen are located at and if there's anything else going on. In particular, this is a very critical test to differentiate between dry and wet macular degeneration because OCT is going to let us see if there's leaking of fluid or blood 
underneath the retina, which would indicate that it's wet macular degeneration. So the dry form of macular degeneration is also known as non-exudative macular degeneration or non-neovascular macular degeneration. I'll explain those in a little bit. But basically what happens is at the cellular levels, the nutrients from the blood supply underneath the retina, they're trying to get transported to those receptor cells, and then after the receptor cells uses those nutrients, it, that those layers underneath have kind of garbage trucks that take all the waste products away. And the problem is, is that the, that process of taking away the waste products from the nutrients is disrupted. And those waste products will accumulate underneath the retina, and that's what we see as those drusen. And like I said, those drusen are actually lipid deposits, but they're also signs of inflammation underneath that retina. And basically that disrupts the flow of nutrients to the receptor cells, and so those receptor cells very slowly start to die. Symptoms that patients might start to notice if they have dry macular degeneration are, like I said, reduced dark adaptation or difficulty seeing at night, maybe reduced contrast of images, maybe a little bit of reduction of your visual acuity, but a lot of times you may not notice a lot of the symptoms that start when someone has early dry macular degeneration. Now wet macular degeneration is also referred to as exudative or neovascular macular degeneration. Both of those terms, exudative and neovascularization, means that there's abnormal blood vessels that grow and more fluid that develops underneath the retina. But basically what happens in wet macular degeneration, which actually dry macular degeneration can convert to wet macular degeneration, and what happens is there's a disruption in those layers underneath the retina, specifically the RPE or the retinal pigment epithelium and Brooks membrane. And there becomes little breaks in those membranes, and then the body recognizes it that the receptor cells are starting to starve, and they say, hey, we ought to get more nutrients. So they said, hey, we got a brilliant idea. Let's grow some new blood vessels to try to supply those receptor cells. Great idea, but doesn't always work out so well. So the body starts to grow new blood vessels between those little cracks in those layers, getting underneath the receptor cells, and those blood vessels are abnormal in that they're very, very leaky. And it's almost like one of these soaker gar garden hose and they leak fluid and that is not a good thing because that fluid and blood accumulates underneath the retina. And if you've ever had a large bruise that's been on your skin for a long period of time, you'll know that sometimes that can develop into a scar if that blood or fluid isn't resolved or absorbed quickly enough. And if it doesn't, then you'll develop a scar underneath that, and then when you get a scar, you get lots of stretching and pulling of the tissue, and that really distorts the vision and causes really reduced vision. And that's what happens in the wet form of macular degeneration. And so the symptoms someone might start to get when they have wet macular degeneration is something called metamorphopsia, which is basically distortion or waviness of your vision. And so if you're looking at something with a straight line, instead of that line being straight, that line might look like it's curved or wavy or distorted. And that's because there's kind of a bulge underneath the retina from that buildup of fluid, and that distorts how the image sits on the retina and causes you to see a wavy line. So sometimes some your doctors are gonna give you something like this called an Amsler grid. So Amsler grid, nothing magic about it. It's basically like a piece of graph paper, but it's really useful if you use this, you look at it, and you cover up one eye and look at the lines, and then you cover up the other eye and look at the lines. And what you're looking for to see if there's any distortion or waviness in those lines or any blind spots or abnormalities on that grid. And it's a great way to diagnose early wet macular degeneration. So sometimes your doctors are going to give you one of those, put it on your fridge, maybe check it every day, but you want to make sure you're covering one eye and then covering the other eye and take a quick look to make sure you're not developing any metamorphopsia. Now, if you do have dry macular degeneration and you're checking your vision regularly with an Amsler grid, and if you don't have an Amsler grid, you can use any straight line object, look at a window, you know, kind of vertical and horizontal lines to see if there's any distortion. If you notice anything like that, make sure you contact your doctor right away so they can do some tests to see if you're starting to develop wet macular degeneration. And the reason why you want to contact your doctor right away is because there are some treatments that can be done for wet macular degeneration that can help prevent it from getting really, really bad. Now, in the past, they used to do some laser treatments, and what they're doing is they're using a laser to burn or destroy some of those blood vessels underneath the retina to stop them from leaking, which stopped the leaking. However, it destroyed the receptor cells on top of them. So, 
oftentimes it resulted in your vision dropping and your vision got a little bit worse after those laser treatments but if you got those lasers done then your vision wouldn't get as nearly as bad as it would have if you hadn't have had the laser treatments done. But they often don't do laser anymore for wet macular degeneration, but rather now they're doing injections into the eye with something called an anti-VEGF medication. So basically what happens when your body has a situation where there's not a new nutrients, it says, hey, we got a problem, let's send out a signal. And so the signal they send out is creating VEGF, which stands for vascular endothelial growth factor. And that tells the body says, hey, we need to create new blood vessels. And so that's a signal for the body to grow new blood vessels. So there are medications out there called anti-VEGF. And most of these are used for cancer treatments. And, but if you inject these into the eye, it's gonna stop that cycle of sending the signal for the body to grow new blood vessels underneath the retina and stop that process of the wet macular degeneration and allow that blood to reabsorb and that fluid to reabsorb and allow the vision to improve. And the great news about the anti-VEGF treatments is that they can improve the vision a little bit if you're getting them done, and they can also prevent it from getting really, really bad. So it's a fantastic treatment that we have now. The bad news is that you need these injections in your eye probably monthly for one to two years, which sounds like a lot, but if it can save your vision, that's a really great thing. So the inevitable question I get is, okay, well, I know if I have wet macular degeneration and I start to develop it and I get it seen early and get treatment started early, there's things that can help prevent it from getting really, really bad. What do I do if I have the dry form of macular degeneration to prevent it from converting to the wet or for prevent the dry form from getting worse. Well, there's a few things that you can do. What you want to do is you can want to control your modifiable risk factors, which there's risk factors which cause us to be more likely to get macular degeneration, which will include age, which you can't control, which is going to include your genetics, which it's more common in people from Northern European descent, which you can't really control that. But you can control things like Smoking. Smoking is the number one risk factor for developing any form of macular degeneration. So you don't want to start smoking. And if you are smoking, you want to reduce and stop smoking as soon as you can. Also, we know that exposure to UV light over a lifetime can cause you an increased risk for macular degeneration. So this starts right when you are a teenager. So you want to wear UV protection all throughout your life. But more and more, we are thinking that macular degeneration might actually be related to systemic vascular conditions. And so anything that you can do to improve your general health, and in particular, your cardiovascular system, can be a benefit for macular degeneration. So you wanna have a heart healthy diet and have regular exercise. Well, we also know that there can be an increased risk for macular degeneration with people that have a higher alcohol consumption, and it's also an increased risk for people that have high blood pressure. So if you can do any of these things to improve your general health, you're probably gonna help reduce your risk for macular degeneration. Another thing your doctor might suggest is using supplements and antioxidants which might help improve the metabolic function of the retina and reduce the risk for progression of macular degeneration. Now, there's some newer emerging treatments for macular degeneration, and in particular, dry macular degeneration. And if you want to learn a little bit more about those, you can watch this video right here. And with that, have a great optometry day.